Well, good evening, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing? I'm not listening to music. I was listening to... I was moving around and listening to my phone. I was listening... Actually, I was listening to some parents talk to some school boards. It's pretty good stuff. I'm not going to share that with you, though, because that's not what I want to talk about tonight. Tonight, what I want to talk about is only the Father knows. Only the Father knows the day that Jesus, our bridegroom, will come back and get his bride. Only the Father knows. So I've been thinking about that today. And I also looked up some Jewish marriage customs, too, that I want to read to you. And I have some scriptures that I want to read, too. I found a song that I really like to share called uh, Come Lord Jesus Come. There's another one like that, but this is a different one with different lyrics. Um, I like the other one. I do. I nearly shared it, but <clears throat> I thought this one fit better. All right, well, let's jump into some prayer. I hope you had an awesome day today. I had an awesome day today. I went and got groceries and put them up. That's a good day when you have more food in the house. All right, well, let's pray. God, we just praise you and thank you for all the many things that you do for us, God, that you provide for us, you protect us, you bless us, God. And we just thank you for that, and we just thank you that... Um, you are on your throne and you are in control all the time, God. There is nothing that you don't know. There is nothing that you don't see. God, we just pray for um, all the many disasters that are going on right now, God. All the tragedies. All the people that are crying for freedom in their countries, God. We pray that these people would be set free. God, we just, we thank you that we have freedom. We take it for granted sometimes, God. Please help us to be thankful for it all the time. God, you are magnificent and powerful and mighty. You are our creator, our protector, our provider, our uh, sustainer. You are our shelter in the storm. You are our strength and our refuge. God, you are kind and loving and compassionate and faithful trustworthy and you want none to perish you are so patient God thank you for loving us thank you for calling us as your children we love you with our whole heart our soul our mind and our strength God we just pray for the lost we just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they could be saved God, we pray for the prodigals to come home while they still can. To repent, to return to you, God, to have you forgive them and reconcile that relationship, God. We pray for all the people in Florida, God. Some of them are protesting on behalf of Cuba. Some of them are not. Some of them, they're still looking for bodies from the building collapse, God. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for Florida. We just pray that you would be with them, God. That they would feel your presence. God, we pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength. We pray for all the people that are sick right now, God, that I know. I just pray for healing for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen, my friends, my pray and share warriors. All right. Well, let me read what I shared on Facebook this afternoon. My computer keeps moving. I've been moving it back and forth. I've been using it in the kitchen so I can stand up. And uh, now my little thing... Little thing wants to rock back and forth. Okay. I really like this song and message by Dustin Kinsrew. I have no idea who that is, but I looked him up all ago and he's it's really good. What beautiful lyrics in this song about waiting for Jesus to come. 
waiting for our bridegroom, waiting for him to come, knowing it must be getting close, but patiently waiting for the only one who knows the day and time, for the only one who knows the day and time to send Jesus to get us, and that's God. God is the only one that knows. Not even Jesus knows. Jesus says in Scripture that not even he knows that day and time or hour. These lyrics are beautiful, and I have been thinking about our bridegroom and even about many years ago how the bridegroom would come in in the middle of the night and capture his bride away from her family. I heard a sermon about this, and I vaguely remember that the only the that only the father of the bride knew when this would happen, but I believe that it's the father of the son now, after reading this um, little thing on Jewish marriage customs. I believe it would be the father of the son because he would know when the son takes off and leaves. Uh, so, that's not right. Uh knew when this would happen. It's the Father of the Son. We must be ready for our bridegroom, Jesus, who could come to catch us away at any time or day. Are you ready to go with our bridegroom? It feels like this time is so close. Please call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now if you are not. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John three sixteen through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that is what I shared. If you get a chance, do go and listen to that song. It's very pretty. And towards the end, it starts talking about when Jesus will come and get us and the trumpet and all the things you know that will be accompanied with that moment and it, it's going to be a quick moment it's not going to be a drawn out moment <clears throat> it's going to be very quick <clears throat> excuse me all right i wanted to make me some coffee but i got busy listening to those parents and i'm so i'm so proud of these parents standing up for their children I'm so proud of them. I'm so happy that they are. Because I think if the school boards don't listen, people just need to take their kids out. Find alternative schooling or homeschool them. Because if they're not, if they're going to focus on things that have nothing to do with an education, then they don't need to be there. If they're going to focus on things that are going to make the children's lives worse instead of better, they don't need to be there. Okay, so let's start in, where do we want to start here? <coughs> I'm sorry. Let's start Isaiah 61, 10. Or let's start in, yeah, that's good. Isaiah 61, 10. We'll start in the Old Testament. I like to work to start in the Old Testament and work towards the New Testament. All right, 6110 says, I will greatly rejoice in my God for in my Lord in my God for my soul shall be joyful in my God for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with, with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the, the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. So here we talk about the bridegroom and that he is all decked out in the bride with adorns herself with her ornaments, uh, her jewels. 
So let's move to 62.5. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. As, and as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. So the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride. Jesus is our bridegroom and we are the bride. The church, his church, is the bride. Is it a certain denomination? No, it's lots of denominations. It's just people that are following Jesus that have asked Jesus into their heart to be his savior. I mean, for him to be their savior. That's who the church is. The church is in no certain denomination. It's like many, many denominations. One huge church under Jesus. Okay, so let's read Jeremiah 21.2 There are many denominations that think they are going to be the only ones in heaven. But the way I read the Bible is that there are going to be many, many denominations. And, and people that don't even have a denomination. That just ask Jesus to be their Savior and trust Him. You know, there are going to be people that have never even gone to a church. Because church isn't what saves you. It is that belief of who Jesus is and inviting Him to be your Savior. Okay, Jeremiah 21, 2. Inquire, I pray thee, of the Lord for us, for Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, maketh war against us. Well, that is not the right verse. 21, 2. Jeremiah 21, 2. Hmm. No, that is not the right verse. I probably wrote it down wrong. I do that sometimes. We'll see if it's 12 too. I read it. No, it's not 12 too either. There is no telling what it is. We'll just skip that one. Um, let's go to... Let's go to Mark 2.19. Okay, Mark 2.19 says, And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast in those days. So he was talking about that he, as the bridegroom, will always be with them. They need to celebrate because he is with them right now, and then they can fast later. Okay. So let's read, let's read Matthew 25, 1 through 13. And this is the story of the ten virgins that were waiting for the wedding feast. We have mosquitoes in our house. All of us have bites. Okay. Okay. Then shall the kingdom of he heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, 
Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Okay, that's another. He just went right into another parable. Okay, so this is a parable about being ready. We need to be ready. When Jesus comes back, we need to be ready. What does it take to be ready? Well, we don't have to pack anything. That is the biggest perk of all, is that we don't have to pack enough clothes for forever. Like, we don't even have to worry about that. We don't have to pack makeup. We don't have to pack jewelry. We don't have to, I mean, we don't have to pack. But our hearts need to be ready. Our hearts need to be ready. Our hearts need to be prepared. <clears throat> we need to be, we need to ask for forgiveness of our sins. We need to be walking as righteously as we possibly can be. We need to be ready. Not that those things by our salvation, they do not. But just like these other five virgins, they were not ready. They weren't ready. They didn't come ready, and they weren't ready. And then they went so that they could be ready, but it was too late. So see, I think that is where people are going to miss the rapture is because they're waiting for their life to get better. They're waiting for themselves to be better. They don't have to do that. Jesus wants us to come as we are. Come as you are. Come as you are and he will change the things that he does not like in your heart. He will change your desires. The desires that you once had, you won't have anymore. So just come as you are and trust him to do that. Okay, where do we want to go from here? Uh, right, we already read that. Let me get over here and like mark off what I've read and what I haven't read. That was a non-read because I don't even know what it was. I read Isaiah and read Mark. Okay, we read that. We just read that. Okay, so my words today was only the Father knows. Only the Father knows when Jesus is coming. So let's read. I want to read to you what I printed off. And it kind of goes with the story that we just read, the Ten Virgins. Okay, those who live in the modern Western world do not catch the full significance of Jesus' promise. This is due to the fact that in his promise, Jesus was drawing an analogy from Jewish marriage customs in biblical times. Since this is so, I guess this is an explanation of what we just got through reading. Since this is so, those marriage customs must be examined if one is to grasp the significance of the promise. The first major step in a Jewish marriage was betrothal. Betrothal involved the establishment of a marriage covenant. By Jesus' time, it was unusual for such a covenant to be established as the result of the prospective bridegroom taking the initiative. The pr prospective bridegroom would travel from his father's house to the home of the prospective bride. There he would negotiate with the father of the young woman to determine the price, called a, a, a mohar, mohar, that he must pay to purchase his bride. Once the bridegroom paid the purchase price, the marriage covenant was thereby established and the young man and woman were regarded to be husband and wife. They were regarded to be married already. From that moment on, 
the bride was declared to be consecrated or sanctified, set apart exclusively for her bridegroom. That's how we are as the church. We are sanctified. We're set apart exclusively for our bridegroom. As a symbol of the covenant relationship that had been established, the groom and bride would drink from a cup of wine over which a betrothal benediction had been pronounced. After the marriage covenant had been established, the groom would leave the home of the bride and return to his father's house. There he would remain separate from his bride for a period of 12 months. This period of separation afforded the bride time to gather her trousseau and to prepare for married life. The groom occupied himself with the preparation of living accommodations in his father's house to which he could bring his bride. At the end of the period of separation, the groom would come to take his bride to live, live with him. The taking of the bride usually took place at night. The groom, best man, and other male escorts would leave the groom's father's house and conduct a torchlight procession to the home of the bride. Although the bride was expecting her groom to come for her, she did not know the exact time of his coming. As a result of the groom's arrival would be preceded by a shout. We read that while ago. The shout would forewarn the bride to be prepared for the coming of the groom. After the groom received his bride together with her female attendants, the enlarged wedding party would return from the bride's home to the groom's father's house. Upon arrival, there the wedding party would find that the wedding guests had assembled already. So they had a lot of their weddings in the middle of the night. And um, that is how the Jewish marriage custom was. And so she had to be ready all the time. <laughs> She had to be ready. Like every night she had to be ready. And so I'm saying that the father is probably the only one that knew what time or hour because he had to be prepared for the wedding. He had to have the preparations for the wedding for them to return. So I thought that was very, I don't remember who, who I heard this sermon from, but I've heard this explained to me before. And so when I started thinking about this today, I thought, I've heard a sermon about that. So I thought, well, I'm going to see if I can find some information on it. And I was able to. God, God led me here. And this is pretty much what I heard in that sermon, is that the, the uh, bridegroom would go back to his father's house for 12 months. And the bride would be getting ready to get married and at the end of 12 months she knew that he was coming but she didn't know when and so only the father knows only the father knows when only the father knows when jesus is coming back and we can find that in matthew 24 36 or maybe yes okay so but of that Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Okay, so when Noah in it, entered into the ark, that was it. Once his family went inside, God sealed the door. The door was sealed shut, just like the bridegroom. Once he went in for the marriage, the door was shut. Once Jesus comes and gets his bride, People will get saved in the tribulation, but it's so much better to be saved now than the tribulation because it is not going to be good. It's going to be, I mean, we think things are bad now. 
with right now all the disasters, all the countries that are uprising for freedom, we think that it's bad now, it is going to be so much worse because the church will be gone. The restrainer will be gone. The restrainer of evil will be gone. We have a restrainer of evil right now, and that's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will leave with the church because the Holy Spirit is in us. So the tribulation is not going to be good. It's not going to be a party. It's not going to be the most evil party that you've ever seen. It's not going to be. It is going to be bondage. It is going to be slavery. If you don't like being told what to do, then you don't want to be here. Because it is going to be. You're going to have a government entity that is going to tell you everything that you can do. And that government entity is raising its head right now. And it wants so badly to do this. But I don't believe that it will be successful until the Holy Spirit is gone with the bride of Jesus. I don't think they'll be successful. All right, let's read John 14, 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. This is Jesus speaking. And receive you unto myself, and that where I am, there ye may be also. And so, oh, I'll read two also. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. So that is us. We are them. He was talking to his apostles, but he was talking to us too. We will be with Jesus. He will come and get us. All right, so let's look at Revelation 1. Way over here towards the end. 1-7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, Almighty. So behold, he comes in the clouds. He's going to come in the clouds. And he's going to come get us. And it's going to be a glorious day like no other day. Not even our very best day in our very best place. It will not compare to that instant when we see our bridegroom come. So let's read Revelation 21, 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now that is the picture that I have behind me. To my left, probably your right. So that is the picture that I have behind me. And I acquired that when I worked for Promise Productions. Um, and I've always loved that picture. And I've had it here in my office, but not up for a long time. So... He showed him the bride. So let's move to 22. Wait a minute. Oh, he did a description of it. Okay. I don't want to describe it. I have read that description before. It is amazing. 2217. 
And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Come, Lord Jesus, he which testify testifies these things, saith, Surely I come quickly. That's Jesus. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So that's the very end of Revelation. And Revelation has got some very scary parts, but it has some very beautiful parts at the end. It just makes us look forward to the coming of Jesus, but we don't know. We don't know the hour or day that that will be, or time of the day that that will be. Only God knows. Only the Father knows. So what else does the Father know? The Father knows that everyone needs Jesus as their Savior. So let me see if I can find a way to do the gospel. Let's do our ticket to heaven. And since we've been talking about heaven, you're a ticket to heaven. Do you want a ticket to heaven? It says admit one. Because only one invitation is given per person. In other words, if your whole family were Christians, you are not saved because of your whole family. Everyone must decide. Everyone must choose. Everyone is given the opportunity. So let's read about your ticket to heaven. May I offer you a ticket to heaven? You don't have to pay for it. And that's a good thing. Because you could never afford to buy it. It's free. But only because someone else Someone has already paid the ultimate price for it. God loves you and not only wants you to have a fulfilling life on earth, he also wants you to live with him in heaven forever. He's the one who offers you a paid in full ticket. No one wants to go to hell where there will be no joy and no pleasures whatsoever. And God doesn't want anyone to go there either. The Bible says that God is not wishing that any should perish. 2 Peter 3 9. But there is a problem with getting that free ticket. We have all done wrong. We have all sinned, haven't we? God's word says if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. 1 John 1 8. Sin pollutes, it makes us unclean unfit for God's presence in that wonderful, perfect place called heaven. Sin penalizes. It separates us from a sinless God. For the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 In short, our sinfulness blocks the delivery of the ticket that we need to get into heaven. So who paid for it? There is good news. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to earth to be born and to live his life without sin. He suffered once for our sins, the righteous one for the unrighteous, which is all of us, that he might bring us to God. 1 Peter 3.18 When God laid on him the iniquity, the sins of us all, Isaiah 53, 6, Jesus cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Mark 15 through 34. The answer is simple and profound. Jesus was separated from God because he took your place and mine on the cross. And by dying, he paid in full the wages our sins had earned. Then he rose from the dead, was seen by hundreds of people, 
and is alive today so you can know him and receive the gift of eternal life your ticket to heaven that's right the Bible says to all who did receive him Jesus who believed in his name he gave the right to become children of God John 1 12 that is awesome you can become a new a new person born of God to start a brand new life that pleases God and of course all God's children have a ticket to heaven do you want it it is no accident you were given this offer of a ticket to heaven God made sure you can receive it. The whole issue is, did Jesus pay for all your sins or didn't he? God said he did. Trust God that it is so. Whoever believes in the Son of God has eternal life. John 3.36 Just as a man says, yes, I will take this woman. <laughs> this is no coincidence. I did not remember about this. Yes, I will take this woman to be my wife. God wants you to tell him, yes, I will take Jesus to be my Savior. I believe that he is the only way to heaven. The Bible says, whoever has the Son, Jesus has life. 1 John 5, 12. If you believe that God's way to heaven is the only way, you can claim your ticket by telling God in words like, the, like these. I'm going to pray this prayer, and I'm going to leave spaces, so if you would like to repeat it after me, you can. I'll try not to do like I did last night. I just started reading. I will try to make pauses. Dear God, I have sinned. I know I have offended you in many ways. I am so sorry. I believe that Jesus suffered and died for my sins, paid my debt in full, and rose again. Jesus, I believe in you and thank you for what you've done for me. Please save me from the penalty of my sins and give me a new birth and the power to live for you. Thank you for this offer to spend eternity with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Remember what John 3, 3, 6 says, Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Do you now believe in Jesus as your Savior, your only ticket to heaven? Do you have everlasting life like God said? Is Jesus now your bridegroom that will be coming to get you? Only the Father knows when. So we need to be ready, just like the ten virgins. Five were not ready. They were not ready. Five were very ready. And five went on in. We don't want to be the five that aren't ready. We want to be ready. We want to be ready at all times. And we don't want to be clinging to the things of this world. We don't want to go up looking down at the world like we long for things of the world. We want to just go straight up, just straight up to Jesus not even looking back our future of eternity is better than our best day here the best in heaven is yet to come and only the Father knows what day, what moment what hour that will be so we just trust in him and we just maintain readiness all the time. And in the meantime, while we wait, we want to be sharing God's truth and the gospel of Jesus. All right, well, let me give you God's blessing.
in Numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Maybe someday I'll have that memorized. And that would be great. Well, thank you for coming and listening to me tonight. And I'm going to do just a generic prayer. Just for everyone that comes here and some of my friends. God, we just thank you for this time that you've given us that we can learn more about your word, God. And we do know that you are the only one that knows what moment the bridegroom will come. And we just trust you, God. We trust you with all your plans and purposes, God. God, we just pray that um, you would protect us and that you would provide for us and that you would bless us. And we thank you for your protection, your provision, and your blessings, God past and present and future God because you are faithful God we just pray for all the people that we know that are sick God we just pray for healing for them that they would feel your presence <clears throat> we pray for um, that you would give us boldness to go and share your truth and the gospel of Jesus We just pray, God, for all the people, all the unhappy people in their countries, God. We pray that you would give them peace. We pray that these dictators would be overturned, God, and that people would replace them that will take care of their people. Or that would give their people freedom that they can take care of themselves even better that they have the supplies to take care of themselves God I know that you see things that we don't even see God I pray for all corruption to end in this government and all over the world for human trafficking to be an industry of the past pray, God, that you would just help us to uh, be the hands and feet of Jesus everywhere we go. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, my pray and share warriors, I've got to get off of here. I think my son fell asleep. i got to go wake him up and get him some dinner. So have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Saturday. I'll be in front of my computer all day. Uh, but it's okay. I'll get it done. So much love and cyber hugs. Until I see you again, good night.